Hello and welcome to Happy Foot, Sad Foot, your LAFC gateway drug and the only LAFC podcast that has led to multiple divorces. I'm Travis Helwig. I'm Vince LaRosa. And I'm Darren Miller. Welcome to our preview episode of LAFC's Western Conference semifinal match versus the Seattle Sounders on Saturday, November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. at BMO Stadium. You can watch it on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV+, and you can watch our live post-game call-in show 10 minutes after the final whistle at youtube.com slash at happyfootsadfoot. Later in the show, we'll make our friends Friends Noah and Ari from Lobbing Scorchers podcast admit stuff about the Sounders. And of course, we'll cover all the storylines for this week's match and make some bets. But first, we just released an Oops All Banter episode for Friends of the Foot, which can only mean one thing. It's time for more banter. It's listener mandated banter housekeeping edition. That's right, Travis. It's the Magic Eraser Listener Mandated Banter Housekeeping Edition presented by Mr. Clean. And I'm here to micro scrub away the reminders that have caked the floors of the show since our last preview pod ages ago. Because as you know, dirty feet are sad feet and clean feet are happy feet. Make sure to keep your feet happy all playoffs long and beyond with the Magic Eraser All-Purpose Cleaner Sponge. The only all-purpose cleaner that features former LAFC coach Bob Bradley right on the box in his signature arms cross pose and full body tidy whities The sponge is white. <laughs> and the feeling's right on your feet after you clean that floor with Mr. Clean, the original zaddy. <laughs> we have a few updates. Uh, first, uh, we have a... <laughs> what a segue. I do think, have you ever gotten a pedicure, that thing that they like rub on the bottom of your feet? Sort of similar to a uh, magic eraser. Yeah, I've never gotten a pedicure, but I trust you. No, you got to get one. I have to? Yeah, sorry, you have to. <laughs> And you have to let me watch. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Moving uh, along. We have a whole fuckload of friends of the foot to welcome after our Patreon-only episode of LAFC Fan Confessions, which was more unhinged than even we expected. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in confessions and for the support from all of our friends of the foot. New. Do you and think it was because Travis did a seamless impression of me? Like they thought that I was actually there. The amount that of was, people that was that, that early wrote enough to me, that like even if you got the preview of it. You got the impression. I think it was. It was like right off the top, right? Yeah. I mean, I everyone think, was like, "This is an incredible impression." We got to join the Patreon. I gotta say, quite a few people write to me and say, "I don't understand why I didn't see your face yet. I could hear your voice so clearly on the YouTube." And I was like, "Look, I gotta tell you, Travis wasn't there. Maybe a writer, but his real path should probably be impressionist." I don't. I don't. I can't. I honestly can't talk about it. I can't yeah. talk about it. Oh. Yeah, you don't want to talk about say, the craft. No one. No one li- wants to be no, that guy. I, 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 let's just say it might be live from New York soon, but Whoa. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it, but keep going, Darren. Wow. Okay. So thank you to everyone who sent in confessions. Uh, we got a shit ton of confessions. <laughs> we got so many. We will do a part two as soon as we get the chance. Because we also got there's so some many left. sent in after the episode came out that were almost as if not more juicy than what we said. Yeah. There's some people stop. T- no, keep telling us these things. I think anytime we're going to do this, we're going to keep us. asking for more and we'll just take the best ones new and old and it, it, we can do it anytime. I mean, people seem to enjoy it. As it long is as that's be- still true. Off season, we should do it for any MLS team and open it up to like, we should be the Ooh, Dumois be cool. of MLS and maybe we'll find out about Bruce arena. That's the ultimate goal here. <laughs> got a got a new job already and we'll still never find out. Who else is promising the people that that someday they'll find this out? When Bruce Arena comes to our stadium, we need to hold up signs that say Bruce Arena, what did you do in New England? <laughs> we need like we need to harass him with the fact that no one knows because people are trying to sweep it under the rug. We have to harass Bruce Arena. That's a promise. <laughs> you heard it here first, bro, folks. <laughs> If you're new to the Patreon, we hope you stay a while. While you're here, check out the pin post on Patreon with info on member benefits so you can take advantage of the Friends of the Foot Discord, 15% merch discount, priority post-game live call-in links, and member-exclusive merch, which brings us to our next update. We now have just two Friends of the Foot exclusive half House 2024 limited edition scarves available at happyfootsadfootpod.com. And extremely limited supply is now available in person. DM us ahead of time if you'd like to meet up at the match and get your scarf that way while supplies last. There are not many, but we can do both. One of those is mine. One of those is yours, yes. So then not as many as we have. And finally, time is running out once again to get our Half House Half Holiday sweaters in time for your holiday of choice. Mm. Easter is my holiday of choice. Ooh. 
That's happyfootsadfootpod.com, where the looks are cleaner than a surface scrubbed by a magic eraser crumbling in your hand in the first use. That's why they come in a rock-hard six-pack with Mr. Clean's six-pack right on the box, so you'll be rock-hard too. Mr. Clean, the original zaddy. Travis, back to you. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I do want to say... I want to apologize to the people at Swiffer. I know that they dropped the contract after all the stuff that we said. And I promise Mr. Clean, we're going to, we won't let you down. We won't let you down. We'll keep this going to work. Literally. And I think that copy is a good, that's a good indication that we're going to treat your brand right. Mm. We associate your brand with rock hard abs and a rock hard body and clean feet. And that's what, uh, that's what Mr. Clean's all about. And the one earring, right? Doesn't he have just like one earring? Mm-hmm. Like a, he does, like yeah. a pirate? It's awesome. I feel like we bantered a good amount in that. I feel like I feel we're good for banter. Should we start the show? It. Yeah. Let's show. Darren, read more copy. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, as the most casual fan on a podcast full of LAFC sickos, I'll never miss a match, but I don't have time to spend every waking moment of my life digging into all the tactics, game plans, and roster moves behind what I'm watching, let alone the news, rumors, conspiracy theories, and shitposting that happens between matches. And yet, I attempt it anyway and end up abandoning my extremely successful and stable life outside of LAFC fandom to descend into a rabbit hole of madness until I wake up shivering on my bathroom floor clutching a soccer ball and longing for the days when all I knew when I watched a match was ball get kicked, ball go in net, Frenchman flip. But I can't unknow that it's not that simple now. Luckily, my friends Travis, the human LAFC crazy wall, and Vince, soccer head on the inside, are here every week to make sense of it all and catch us up on the most important storylines that live beneath the surface of every match so we can all enjoy them so much more in a segment we call Storylines. Anyone tuning in to hear about soccer, you got to wait longer, baby. (laughs) Everyone's tuning in for this. I didn't set up my lights because they scared me last time. (laughs) Storylines. 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 These are the motherfucking storylines. These are the motherfucking storylines. These are the motherfucking storylines. Playoff, bitch. Darren, Vince, Dince, it has been years since our last preview pod, and boy, are my storyline sacks in need of a juicing. It's time. Wow. It is. It is. the What? Storyline sacks too much for you? It is time. The <laughs> Let's Western... go back to rock hard. <laughs> what did I say? It, it is the Western Conference semifinals, a.k.a. the quarterfinals, a.k.a. three wins away from winning our second MLS Cup in three years. And that brings us to our first storyline of the week, which is this. Is LAFC now the favorite to win it all? The first round saw an insane series of upsets in the Eastern Conference with reigning champions Columbus Crew falling to the Red Bull, Cincinnati losing to NYCFC, and of course, MLS's best team of all time, Inter Miami losing in a best of three series to Brad Guzan on methamphetamine. That means <laughs> in the East, the top seed is now Orlando. The top seed out of the East is the fourth seed, Orlando City FC, the purple team. <laughs> and over <laughs> here in the West, things are just a bit more normal with us and the Galaxy, the two best teams winning our matchup, the Galaxy a little bit more cleanly than we did, Seattle winning, albeit not that convincingly, against Houston, and the only upset being Chicho Arango and RSL going down to Minnesota United, a team Vince said has no chance of winning that series. Now, going in 
to this final series of games. The third, we eat, there's three rounds of games left. Any guesses who are the top four teams on DraftKings right now? I mean, LFC, wait, Galaxy were one going in, so they're still one, right? No, you're not. A, you're not, you're not a I'm waiting for you to guess. Are these your official forward, guesses. Then. I mean, I'm going to say Galaxy, LAFC, then Seattle. I feel like is probably. I, I mean, they would be a better bet for me than any of the teams in the East. Darren, I'm going to say LAFC, Galaxy. Who's left in the East? <laughs> Darren doesn't even know any teams on. It's the it's East. one of those weird years where Columbus every team is, from the East is eliminated before the East side of the playoffs is done. <laughs> Yeah, actually, MLS Cup is in is next round. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because MLS just announced that Miami won the MLS Cup, so I just got so confused by that. Yeah, pack it up. And go I home. assume they did because they're going to the Club World Cup. Here's <laughs> according to DraftKings, the official sports book of Happy Foot, Sad Foot, the current odds in fourth. Both New York teams are tied for fourth at plus eight hundred. In third, Orlando at plus five hundred. In second, Carson at plus 300. And in first place, LAFC at plus 200. I think, Vince, that swap with Carson happened because they liked our matchup less Mm -hmm. in the first round than Carson's matchup. And so once we beat that matchup, they put us back on top. Yeah. And now they know, assuming everything goes to plan, LAFC will be home against the Galaxy. So I I guess, yeah, they're looking ahead. They're smart. Uh, So... Do you guys think that those that is a fair ranking? Are we now favorites to win MLS Cup? What teams are you afraid of, both in the West and the East? Tell me how you're feeling about the playoffs writ large. The playoffs have actually been surprisingly fun for as much as we've like sure. joked about it. Like watching, as you said, Brad Guzan go a little bit crazy. Like when they scored that goal and then pushed him in the net and he looked like Spider Man for a second, that was like <laughs> one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, so it, but still at the same time, like, I don't know what to make of the fact that so many of the good teams are out, obviously all on the East side. Like, I don't know what that means. I I tried to think about it. Like, does that mean the East is actually better than I thought it was? Does that mean that the teams that were there aren't as good as I thought they were? Or does, or begrudgingly, does that mean that MLS is like, told you best of three series. It's the best guys. It's the best. In, in theory, the best of three series is supposed to eliminate things like this from happening, right? Like a Kinda, single yeah. elimination game is supposed to be random, but Miami going down in three games and Columbus going down in two games is not supposed to happen. Mm-mm. Are you afraid of any teams left in the, in the East? We have NYCFC, we have the Red Bull, we have Orlando, and then who's the last? Oh, Atlanta. Are you afraid of any of those teams if we have to play them in the final? Not necessarily. I don't think any of them. I mean... And again, it'll be at home. It'd be, yes, it'll be at home. That's always great. And then I'm just trying to think of like, who's like a big time match winner. And I guess Red Bull has Forsberg. He's a good player, but he's not really a goal scorer. Like he's a creator. I, there's just not a big time player on the other side, the way that there was with Columbus having Cucho. And then obviously Inter having Messi, Suarez, just keep naming them off. Right. And I, I still think that the end of the day, especially now that we're getting into the games that are one-offs, you got to have guys that, that like ice in their veins, they're stone cold killers and they, they score goals. It's going to take scoring goals because it's going to be a mistake. And it's kind of like what we saw on a longer scale against Vancouver, Vancouver first game. We make a mistake. They hit the post doesn't go in. They make a mistake. We don't miss. That's what, that's what wins playoff games. That's what wins MLS cups. Darren, how are you feeling? Uh, anything about the West or the East that that surprises you? Honestly, nothing. Nothing in the East. Well, that surprises me. You mean that that I'm worried about? Yeah, sure. I'm not worried about the East. I think it's whether LAFC shows up as their best selves in the East. I, I think that's the case against Seattle as well. And I think with if we play Galaxy and it's us at our best and them at our best. I can't guarantee a win. I, I wouldn't say I'm like they would. They're the better team in that scenario. So much as I'm not like super confident. Like who knows what'll happen. I think I think that is a very smart point, and I think it speaks to like we've talked about this a lot. Randomness in playoffs. It's why playoffs are fun. Mm-hmm. And I thought about doing this as a bet, and I don't think it's unlikely enough, so I won't do it. But part of me is like it's not going to be Carson versus LAFC. I like. 
just weird stuff happens. And so I like one team of the two might get upset at home. And I, I don't think that is that unlikely. I think it's more likely than not that it will be, but I don't think it is that much more unlikely, if that makes sense, that that one of the teams loses on an off on an off day, especially. Well, why don't we get into it this week? We face a Seattle Sounders team that seems to be playing much more consistently since we last saw them, which brings us to our second storyline of the week, which is this. Will Seattle regain their title as LAFC's playoff kryptonite? They have met three times in the MLS Cup playoffs, and twice the result were some of the most devastating losses in LAFC history. Seattle prevailed in 2019 with our best team we've ever fielded, and in 2020, but LAFC did get their revenge last season. But as Vince has pointed out, we have never beaten them at BMO in the playoffs. Overall against Seattle, it's hard to find a team that we play better against. Uh, We've won 13 times, we've drawn four times, and we've lost five times. The Seattle Sounders have normally struggled to win against us at BMO. Out of eight matches played at LAFC Stadium, the Sounders have only won once in the 2019 playoffs, and they've drawn ones. LAFC have claimed victory the remaining six times. The last time LAFC lost straight up to Seattle was the 2020 playoffs, which is insane. We have not lost to them since the 2020 playoffs. That's how long the streak against Seattle has been going. Seattle is desperate to beat us. Can they regain the title as our playoff kryptonite? Will that haunt us? In the way that it haunts me, will it haunt the players? Vince, Darren, how are you feeling again about going up against our ghosts, our the specter of our past, the Seattle Sound? I think, again, I think it all depends on LAFC. We get into this a little bit with our segment with Noah and Ari, but Seattle's annoying as hell. They make they play a very frustrating match, at least for a fan to watch. I, I think they frustrate opponents in a way that, it's kind of on those opponents to overcome that and play the way that they play. So I hope that we can do that. I feel like we've shown in many games this season, sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. So I don't know. It's weird because you just mentioned that record. Like we do nothing but win against them. But at the same time, those wins aren't super convincing every single time. There's a lot of luck there. The last time we played it doesn't look... It was a lucky win, I would say. Yeah, I mean, that last game against them was insane. It was not a convincing win. It was just like, I don't know what the fuck that was, but I'm glad we won. So, I mean, I guess that could happen again, and that's great. But Vince, how are you feeling about about Seattle coming back and beating us again at home? I mean, I don't know if we're going to talk more about like what I think should happen, like how the game might set up, but in terms of just playing them and how I feel, I think, I mean, I'm never super confident. You know, you guys know me. I'm not a, a guy that's like, we're definitely going to go out and dominate them. But I will say this, I think that, of all the teams and all the series we could have had prior to playing Seattle that to Darren's point, like they just need to show up that Vancouver series is the perfect primer for this game. Vancouver plays a, a lot, the way a lot in a lot of ways, like Seattle does They're they're scrappy. They're going to try to outrun you. They're going to kick the shit out of you. And I actually think that Vancouver has better weapons when it comes to like the, the attack. I know Brian white, again, we referenced that he missed that opening shot he hit the post in that in the very opening game but i think that they're better and so lafc i think should be prepared what i do worry about those is just is the one-off against vancouver what we saw at at the end was basically they ran out of gas and lafc you know smashed it they had better talent to bring in obviously with the substitutions vancouver couldn't change and the guys were just flat they were dead on their feet this is that's not going to be a problem for seattle and so that would be my only worry is lafc comes out flat and we know how well this team plays when they're ahead. It's a little worrying when they're not. And so that that's the, I guess that's the big thing that I would worry about going into this match. You mentioned it. What do you think this is going to look like between these two teams? Um, what do you think uh, the setup will be? How are you feeling about the matchup? I do feel like it'll probably play out a lot like that Vancouver game. Because like I said, just kind of their mentality and the way that Schmetzer coaches them up to not give up stupid mistakes and not do dumb things and be kind of pragmatic. I'd say this, there's two big things that I'm going to look for, two big decisions that Steve needs to make. First one, pretty simple. Uh, I think we're all thinking about this. Olivier Giroud, does he start? Does he not start? I, I don't 
know for sure. I kind of feel like he doesn't because I kind of feel like he has been carrying some kind of injury that's made him seem a little bit less fit. He doesn't seem the type to me to be so leggy and so heavy on his feet. So it just makes me think that I don't know what he'll do there. The other one is the formation. Will Steve look at the way they played in that 4-3-3 and say, I love this. We had a lot more options. We could pass better. We could move the ball better. And I think we'll have more of the ball in this game. And so I want my team to be set up so they can be connected and so that they can be proactive. Or will he revert to the formation that has worked so well? It has also worked well against Seattle because he thinks that he can actually lure Seattle out. And I think he plays in that 3-4-3 because basically what it does is it spreads the field. And in that environment, especially against a team that against a lesser team, I don't want to like totally drag Seattle, but against a team that like their talent level isn't the same as LAFC's. If they can find a way to spread the field, then you're basically in 1v1 matchups and you would have to take LAFC in those. If you get LAFC into, into space and you get their, the type of guys like Tillman, O'Brien, and then of course, Bowanga, Oliveira, Bogush going 1v1 and, and going into space, you like LAFC's odds. So I think those are the two big things that Steve will be weighing going into Saturday. Now, we, we've talked about this already a little bit, but I do want to get to our final storyline, which is a very important one. Just what LAFC team will we get? And I don't just mean player and formation. I mean mentality. The way we played in the first half of game three against Vancouver and all of game two was enough to make us worried about players not feeling urgency against teams that they think they are better than. Because we have dominated Seattle in the past and because there's a chance this game might be played in the rain, Seattle's favorite type of precipitation, it is very (laughs) possible we could have some sort of slip up this game. Not only that, in the rain. Not only that, (laughs) shout out to Born Slippy. Not only that, (laughs) but with Miami and Columbus out and Carson looming just a game beyond, it would be natural for players to look beyond this game and think, maybe we got this shit in the bag. We got one more important game after this, and then we kind of won. It feels like one of those famous trap games that you hear about when you're listening to sports. Vince's favorite term. So how are you guys feeling about the mentality of a team who just got taken to three games by Vancouver and sees the promised land as long as they lock in? How are you guys feeling? Playoff trap game. Playoff trap game. I don't wow. even know how that's possible, but now it's that it's out there. You put it out My, there, Travis. Miami Atlanta game it. three, that's a playoff trap game. It was. It's an it's Whoa. elimination game. It's winter go home. A playoff it's not trap, a trap series. Game. Oh God. <laughs> uh, I, let's a playoff trap three it. games. You know what? <laughs> Vince is undeniable. <laughs> I think it is a it is a real worry because and it's only because of the level that we know LAFC can play at, the talent that they have. You don't talk about this, and I guess this is why trap games are even a thing. You don't talk about this with teams where you're like, yeah, if they win, that'll be nice. It'd be nice for them to win. Whereas LAFC, to your point, they should win. And they should. They're at home. They have a better team. They have talent. The only thing going against them is obviously the guys that they had to send out on international duty. That's not nice. That's not great. They traveled far distances, and they're coming back only a couple days before this match. That can always be something to worry about and a wild card, a big variable in this. But I just this team is not one of those teams where you would think, and yes, they did sleepwalk through that first half, but then they definitely kicked ass in the second half, right? Like they got to halftime. And I I just have to imagine that in that locker room, there's a lot of voices, not just Steve's voice that are sounding off. And I, I just can't see a world in which these guys don't believe in themselves and come out so nonchalant after what they went through. And even if they do, I don't see there's a, a world in which at halftime, somebody doesn't put a foot in their ass and they get going. So if they lose this game, I mean, it very well, obviously it's sports, anything could happen, but I, I really think if they lose this game, it's, it's not going to be based off of kind of effort and them putting in that, that extra bit just because they're like, well, you know, let's, we've already got this one in the bag. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm, I'm not worried about the team showing up against Carson and I'm not worried about the team showing up in an MLS cup. There is a part of me that's a little bit worried about them being like, well, we got this. We've played them enough times. We know we got this. I'm not saying that I definitely think that's going to happen, but I am more worried about it than I would be in the other two games. I also think 
because we've talked about, you know, what what would make the season a failure. I think this is the last game that we have to win before we could say it's been a good season, right? If you go out against Seattle, it's mm. going to feel like a dud of a season, even with the U.S. Open Cup. It's going to feel bad to sure. lose this round. It'll make sense to lose to Carson or some random fucking loss against whoever the fuck is left on, on the East. Well, um, I would, be, Orlando. I would yeah. be much more on board with the pressure of expectations being what causes them to stumble more than, Interesting. than them thinking, oh yeah, we've beaten Seattle so many times. Because to your guys' point, like they were all there for that game at Starfire. That was not an easy game. I don't know if yeah. any team really deserved to win that game. So I don't think anyone's going to be going into training this week and being like, we kicked the shit out of those guys, right? And somebody's and, and not having somebody be like, were you even there? Did you see what happened? I mean, remember Murray... It, you know, ha- had the injury just before that game, like they were they were going through a, like a lot going on. So I think that they're going to remember how much like that was obviously uh, like a moral victory and it got them over the hump to get them to a final to win that final. But I don't think they're going to look at it lightly like they were just like they cruised through that. Darren, final question. Have you ever been to Seattle? So glad you asked. You've never asked me that before because <laughs> we've never played them before, Darren. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, you can refer to episodes. <laughs> I wish I had that at the tip. Of my I wish you could. What's your Starbucks yeah, order? Been a, been a What's your Starbucks Seattle. order? How's that? <laughs> mm, yeah. uh, I drink Seattle's best coffee. So, mm. <laughs> well, thank you again to the good folks at Mister Clean and the Magic Eraser for those storylines. When we come back, we're going to hang out with our friends from Seattle, Ari and Noah from the Lobbing Scorchers podcast. And we're back. And we're back with our returning champions, our good friends, two of the only good MLS podcasters. Please welcome Noah and Ari from Lobbing Scorchers up in Seattle. How you doing? Good. Appreciate that intro. And yeah, really excited for these two teams to play each other. Uh, This is a matchup that you don't really get a lot. So it's just going to be really interesting to (laughs) see two teams that just, you know, don't know each other that well face off and go at it. Yeah, we've we've seen a lot of speculation around, you know, will they, won't they, what's going to happen? You know, there's not really much precedent for these two teams playing each other this season, the last season. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a almost a once in a lifetime opportunity coming up here. It is special when two teams, you know, it, this is like one of those dream matchups, right? Like when a when a guy goes from WWE to AEW and you finally get to see him fight, it feels like that's that's what we're getting this weekend. This is not a sporting Kansas City podcast. We don't have to get into wrestling. But uh, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, though, uh, you know, I think there's probably some Seattle people that are dreading. This matchup, just given the recent history between these two teams, which I think we all uh, we all know and recognize. But th- I don't know. I was thinking about it today, and the way I feel about it is, like, uh, the streak is never going to end if you don't play LAFC anymore. So there's really no reason to, uh, <laughs> to like, dread this matchup. Like, I'm actually, I'm excited for it. Like, uh, let's do it. Let's do it again. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. It- I, I mean, I kind of want to know from your guys' perspective, I think, you know, I'm not I'm not looking forward to it because I do feel like you guys have a chip on your shoulder about our team. And you've also been playing better lately from what I've seen. Tell us what we've seen, what, what's different about Seattle since the last time we played you at Star Fox 64 Field. Um, <laughs> well, I think what you have is a team that's played a lot better during the back half of the season, pretty much universally except for when they play LAFC specifically. So they definitely, since the open cup games and really since these two teams faced off last time, Seattle has been in pretty good form, really good form, honestly, but what's different about them. I don't know if there's that much different, but I think the defense is playing at an extremely high level right now. You saw that in the Houston series and there's still challenges offensively, but the offense has by and large functioned much better pretty much from the summertime onward just not against LAFC which is the hurdle that they're gonna have to get over here yeah I don't really think there's been much different I think that's kind of been an issue with the Sounders not saying that we're not gonna you know roll in there and bam five goals on you guys but it's it's been a good attack when you see Jordan Morris and Albert Rusnak playing really well and it's been very different when you don't see them playing at all which we saw against Houston and we trolled two nil nil 
get was it one one, one i don't one, know one one, one nil nil yeah who cares whatever <laughs> uh and and got bailed out with some really dumb red cards so not excited not really different but also completely different just because of the vibes for lafc fans that have been like overconfident and even for these guys here on the podcast i've been reminding people that lafc has never beaten seattle playing at home in a playoff game and i think uh, what i want to ask you guys is is it a benefit that there are so many players still on the team from when you played lafc in 2019 and beat us at home and is it going to be bad that edward atuesta is still on our team but will be on the bench because clearly he was your best player in that game (laughs) i think i think it is a benefit that uh that seattle has a lot of guys who were there in 2019. I was actually I was out at Sounders training today, and I was talking to Jordan Morris about exactly that. I asked him that real journalist, said, yeah, real real wow. boots on the ground journalism. I asked him that exact Thank question, and he said uh, he said, "Yeah, like we can lead on that. We've been in this situation before." And he was sort of talking about how they don't kind of mind the underdog role, which Seattle is definitely. I don't think it, it reminds me a lot of 2019 in the sense that I don't think anybody really expect Seattle to win this game. And I think they're playing with house money a little bit. And when you're in that situation, you can play a little freer. And I think that's what we were talking about. We were, I was hoping they would lean into for the open cup game because they were the underdog there too. And that didn't really power them through that time. But like, it just feels like the odds are even more stacked against them this time, even though I do think the 2019 LAFC team was better than this one. And for some reason, Seattle hates to play at home. It's like their least favorite thing in the entire <laughs> world. They would rather, you know, travel to the Sib- that sub- Siberian Peninsula and, you know, kick kick around on a frozen pitch. So somehow I feel like it is, like you're saying, they've, they've never l- beat the Sounders at home in the playoffs. I think, you know, there's kind of a feeling there of like, they can just block everything out, go do that figure it out you win you win you lose you were never meant to be there in the first place so we hate playing at your stadium too law of averages that the streak statistically just can't go on forever so um, we're big stats guys i'm big yeah big (laughs) guy once you get to the seventh matchup in a row or whatever this is like just eventually it's got to flip if for no other reason than that uh it's not gonna last forever i just want to say we're big um careful what you wish for things can always get worse guys uh, yeah. So just just going to throw that out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to tell myself <laughs> something. Yeah, we've got like, you know, what, what are we supposed to do here? Yeah. You know, it's like it's like, oh, here we go again. Time to go to work at the going to lose factory. Like <laughs> so you still got to wake up in the morning and, you know, put your boots on and you guys got get a union job. And you're I losing you guys so much. The experience of having watched your team lose to the same opponent six times in a row there I, you get to a point where it kind of stops affecting you in the same way that a normal loss does. yeah well i mean maybe they understand with like finals but maybe that's that would be it you know <laughs> uh excuse oh, me i'm trying to remember the last final, final of the year yeah. uh yeah. of all time which is that's the, right you know, uh, america's the, the, cup the people's that's true. trophy you can get you can get a couple more and then you can come talk to us how many yeah, u.s yeah. open cups equals one mls cup <laughs> Oh, well, I think five. I think Sanders, five. And I don't know if yeah. if that calculation has been made. Yeah. But yeah, got to be divisible somehow. When I think of some of my worst memories as an LAFC fan, Seattle is involved a lot of the time. And so yeah. I think like going into this match, I have some real I mean, I'm not looking forward to either if we beat you then playing the Galaxy, but also this match. Like I have so much fucking PTSD from that 2019 game where we were. It, I mean, it must be like how Miami felt, where we felt invincible. And then it was just some of the ugliest soccer I've ever seen. And I left really sad, I would say. Very sad. The, the way Seattle plays hasn't changed a whole lot, unless I'm mistaken, too. And, like, they're annoying. Like, do you enjoy watching the team that you root for have that style? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll let Ari answer that one, because I'll be the hotter take here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think the, there was definitely a point this season where the, the attacking play was so anemic that it was hard to watch because it just felt like pulling teeth the whole time uh, for me, like since, since the offense picked up a little bit, I, I have started to enjoy watching them again because there's a lot of very, very, really awesome, talented players on the team that do really cool stuff out there. But like, 
it's not the same experience as watching Inter Miami where they're going to hang four or five goals on you because they have a bunch of the best players that have ever played the game. But me personally, I can appreciate a team that plays elite defense, is very technically skilled and is opportunistic in attack and in transition, which is really honestly been the Sounders identity for a long time now. So I don't honestly think it's that much different except earlier in the year they just weren't scoring goals yeah like is it interesting to watch sure like it's not the worst thing in the world like i've seen (laughs) i've seen you know i've i've seen us lose to san jose like that was the worst thing in the world but well yeah happened to us Andrew at home against the quakes this year yeah so Mm -hmm. you know i think where my frustration comes is this like there's a lot of um and, and what a lot of Sounders fans feel is it's almost there. It's almost there. I, I dubbed this the season of almost, where like we got so close, but just not there. You have Paul Rothrock putting in dimes. And it seems like, you know, maybe one out of five of those Jordan Morris is finishing. One out of eight of those Jordan Morris is finishing. So you're just like, God damn it. God damn it. Get your foot out there. You're like seven feet tall. Like put that ball in the back of the net. There's, you know, there's no Denny Bowanga where you can just be like, I'm confident that the goat is going to go out there and just like go crazy. So it's a little frustrating, but like, like Ari said, it's actually really fun to watch good defensive soccer and even more impressive. Like when you understand where the team's at and just how talented Brian Schmetzer is at utilizing this group of what is essentially like, in my opinion, you have a really high like ceiling and then everything just kind of falls off after that. I, I did not leave that Open Cup game confident in our ability to play well against Seattle. It felt like that game could have gone either way. It was true chaos the whole way. And so while this will be um, an adult-sized pitch... I do think it'll be a, it, I am I am not going into this game overconfident the way that I think some fans of LAFC are. Um, and you know, I, one thing I would, one thing I would hang, you know, the, the Seattle hat on is Brian Schmetzer is a good tactical coach. I don't care what anyone says him and his team getting to play the same club and get their ass beat multiple times. I think that's a good indication of like, he can, he can work through that. So, uh, I'm I'm doing a little copium here, but we got it. I got to I got to hit that somewhere. The you know? other thing I'll say is that the way I think of it is if Seattle wins this game, it makes the whole losing streak versus LAFC worth it because ending that streak by knocking LAFC out in the playoffs in their own building again, mm-hmm. that would it would be like a full circle bit. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I would honestly, I would appreciate, like, I, I would look back on the losing streak versus LAFC with fondness if they win this game. Yeah. If they win this game, if they lose this game, then it's just another part of the streak. Yeah. But, I think and, that's totally fair. I think that's yeah. earned. And, Beating you know, at, at home in the playoffs is a fluke. Three times is a pattern, and then we have a streak. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, you know, you're in the driver's seat right now. It's, you know, we would argue because we're a Galaxy podcast. We would argue Galaxy's in the driver's seat to win the mm-hmm. win the cup this year. But, you know, with how the East is shaking out, it seems like LAFC is in, in the driver's seat. The pressure's on you. Whoever wins this game has a good, really good chance of coming out of the West. Not just, I mean, obviously, because they're in the West final. But uh, Minnesota, I don't think, is scaring that many people. And the Galaxy... For how much we're a Galaxy Apologist podcast, they love to choke and give up yeah. really bad goals in inopportune moments. It's like as their well. top five favorite yeah. like <laughs> moments. It's like David Beckham, Robbie Keane, and then giving up really shitty goals. That's like mm. their favorite things. Ricky Pooj is in there too with his fancy jeans. Uh, He's hot. what a well dressed man. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> the, so before you go, we we came up with a really dumb segment that we want to play with you guys. And Darren and I were a few beers deep at, at a bar after our last game. And we came up with the softest idea of all time. <laughs> and it is, it's called You Gotta Admit. And here's how it works. We'll go back and forth. Someone from our show will say a you got to admit. Then someone from your show will say a you got to admit. And we'll say something that we think reflects your team or your city. And then you guys get to decide, the opposing podcast gets to decide whether or not they got to admit that. Does that make sense? So, And, and we'll be honest. We'll be, if yeah. we have to admit something, we mm. will say whether or not we got to admit it. Okay? We can commit to that as well. Yeah. Great. Great. 
Great. So I'll go first just so we get we get the ball rolling and, and we have a feel for it and then we'll go back and forth. Okay. Um, you got to admit, the Sounders are so irrelevant that some people think Charlie XCX made up that shade of green. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do have yeah, to admit you that. Do gotta you admit that. Do, you yeah, you do have to admit that. Middling, I, I never, green. Uh, I didn't make the connection between those shades of green, but it's true. Sounders are yeah. brat. Brad if you're not going to make that connection, who is? Yeah, we really <laughs> saw how that uh, strategy worked out. So um, Yes, it's a winning strategy. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, I got one. I got one. Yeah. All right. Um, you got to admit that it's pretty funny that LAFC signed Olivier Giroud, the leading goal scorer in the history of the French national team, World Cup winner, and Kai Kamara is still a better option than him at, uh, on the depth chart at striker. <laughs> You got yeah, yeah, I'll admit yeah, I that. Think we'll, I think we'll admit that pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about it today. Like, uh, I think he doesn't start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like if I'm if I'm Steve C and I'm making this lineup, I'm literally starting Kai Kamara over Olivier Giroud, um, which is funny because Kai Kamara is like the definition of an MLS lifer, and uh, Olivier Giroud, you can't get over him on the depth chart. Impossible. Hey, he, he literally was just in the Sierra Leone. It, on his 40 year old legs traveling across the world and we'll be coming back a couple of days before the game but yeah let's move on i love him <laughs> <laughs> that i did deep. ask him to come and play in seattle after this year and he he looked at me longingly at, at uh at the shitty field and just shook his head and i'm like damn oh i'm surprised no he didn't say i'm surprised he didn't here. say wait i haven't already did I? <laughs> He's like, I've lost count myself. All right, I think you right, guys should do another one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. I think I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, the first one I had in mind was also about the color, so I got I got to switch one. Oh, this is good okay. stand up right here. This is how I would be at an open mic, just like all of uh, ours are about the shade of green. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what else I got. What else I got? Guys, um, what you guys else, don't what like colors. I guess uh, it's gonna be a long night. Uh, <laughs> you guys okay. seen that TikTok app? Uh, Charlie <laughs> XCX, everybody. Uh, you got to admit. Jordan Morris runs like a fat kid realizing he can actually run for the first time during a relay race at summer camp. Oh my God. This is so much more yeah. elaborate than mine. Yeah. You do have to yeah. admit that. You, you do, do. Have to admit that. My dad says he, he looks like he runs with a stick up his ass. So that's always been my head. At all <laughs> He's times. moving really fast, but it yeah. is, it is pretty yeah, funny. He, it it used to be better. Sense. He used to be like a lot. I think he, he went to the gym. He used to be like a more chubby kind of like <laughs> big hunk of meat kind of situation but he like, he looks career. like yeah. a soccer player now he's a lean yeah. cut now yeah he had he had the freshman 15 on from his stanford days but it was like 45 uh <laughs> oh boy you gotta do one i already did fuck one, so. okay i had one but i don't know if it's good it's you gotta admit that la drivers are some of the worst in the entire country <laughs> but damn does Ilya know how to sell a tire <laughs> Wow. That was a good one. That was a good yeah. one. That turned into a compliment. Yeah. Sort of. yeah. <laughs> I, I would love to admit that. I love, he's got the smart choice. And I honestly think changing lanes without your blinker, also the smart choice. I do have I, a sticker that says, you don't have to tell me you're from California. I can tell by the way you drive. And I stand by that. I actually proved what you just said on my way home just now on a continental tire. It was essentially flat. And I went to a gas station and filled it up as much as I could and still drove home. So and I think I proved both of, of those points. And you could roll that into how you've got to admit that the Sounders are kind of like a tire that you just keep filling up and it's leaking air, <laughs> yeah. but you're just trying to get to the next off season. <laughs> Fair. Well, I guess you guys go. Again. You just did ours okay, for us. So. I got it. I'm, I have to. Yeah. I have to go again. All right. I'm gonna, just gonna come up with one right on the spot right yeah. now. All right. This is really good crowd work <laughs> right now. You got to admit that when Steve C talks, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know how to describe it. You got to admit that when Steve C talks, he sounds like it's like a soccer robot. I would, I would describe it like he gets asked a question, and just like his vocabulary Steve's and CBT. also the way he. Uh, They'll be like, Steve, what do you what do you need to do to go win the game this weekend? And he's like, Well, we have to go out there and we have to uh we have to score more goals on the other team and then we will win the game. Like he's just he's very 
It is a chatbot. Like he's like a cyborg up on the podium. Steve Chat GPT is that what the C yeah. stands for? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It mm-hmm. took me a while to formulate that. It's okay. That, that take, one was a, that was that was a banger, Ari. I don't. <laughs> yeah. That was a banger. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> No, I think you're right. I think, well, I, I mean, Vince, Vince and Steve are good friends. Vince, are you, um, do you agree that Steve, um, I will, sucks? I will. Yeah. I mean, I'll agree because he has just th- this utter contempt for the media. Uh, that too. yeah. And, and really it's just him being like, I have to be here, but I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm not going to give you anything to actually write about. So here's the a voice, bunch of soccer terms. The voice does read as, as if you want. It reads as like saying it through gritted teeth. Like I can't believe I have to talk to you at all. Right. Yeah. yeah. And That's I'm speaking like, solely about myself, mostly. Um, <laughs> it was a tough, tough go. Me and him. Um, yeah. Vince, do you want? Do you want to? Uh, I do. do I have add? one that I think will be controversial. Maybe you guys will. Let's hit it. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I'm yeah. trying to. I'm trying to stew yeah. one up here, and it's just we're running into well, stage fright. You. You got to admit. That while many noteworthy things in Sounders history have occurred at Starfire, the field's actual historical significance is that Denny Boonga christened it with a stream of piss before mm-hmm. the Open Cup semifinal. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you do have that's to admit pretty, that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Damn, that's top yeah. five Sounders. I mean, it's. I gotta say, actually, I did. That's the one I disagree with because See, that's why I said I knew it was going to be when- controversial. <laughs> <laughs> the the amount of shit hazard that's happened there, I think that's that's like one, there's it's a one true. A one B. I think that's one B just because he pissed all over us in that game, literally. So like that's there. One A is Clint Dempsey absolutely bullying a referee, stealing his notebook out of his hands and ripping it up like in a game where you had four players, well three players get ejected, one go out injured. You finish the game with seven guys against Portland, and Obafemi Martins goes out for like three months because of that game like yeah that, that, that was, was just the like all-time starfire yeah. game no question but the uh the lafc open cup game this year with denny buonga mm-hmm. pissing on the field was very good bad officiating handball winner like just that's that's a banger that's a banger. i do it think if you beat us someone from your team should piss on the field at be oh yeah Ooh. right well, right uh, center okay pitch. here's here's a uh, last one you got to admit in 2019 when seattle knocked lafc out the playoffs and uh knew who kicked the can of dos Equis back into the stands after someone threw it at him that that rocked yeah you well admit. or you could just say that was his best shot on target of his career <laughs> it's the clean, cleanest true. strike he's ever hit um, yeah exactly there we it go it actually was yeah and i will admit that honestly like of all the things that you could do in that moment it's pretty fucking badass yeah like yeah. the picture they got of it is my all-time favorite. yeah i have one more okay while okay. steve c may be the one of the best coaches in the league you've got to admit the vanny sartini is way better at giving head. <laughs> you got to admit, I don't have Shut any it down. Admit. It's over. I, I don't, yeah. Look, he... He's, he's the only one who's given us any evidence. No, I have some evidence with Dolo. I think that uh, Danny's better. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Okay, that's our segment. Um, <laughs> um, we do I have, have, I, I, we have an embarrassing gonna, amount more that, no, we're, that we can I, skip. That's fine. I like, that's I like fine. the segment. It's a yeah. good segment. I do I'm want so to sorry end that on. we have now ruined all of your sponsorship opportunities, but that's what we're here for. <laughs> Thank you so we much. We did that on our own yet. just fine. <laughs> yep. Um, we'll end it with one that I think you guys will you'll very much disagree with. You got to admit, Paul Rothrock, not even that handsome. Not that handsome. Ooh, bad take. Ooh, bad take. <laughs> bad take. Wow. Bad take. <laughs> that's shots fired. Take. We'll stand for a lot, but I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Are you coming to the game? Will we see you on Saturday? We're actually, neither of us are. I I had, I had like Thanksgiving travel plans like already set. So I, I, I was planning wait. on it. And then, you know, I have to work or some shit. It's, Ooh, it's really dumb. I just, that's a drag. Yeah, Sounds like I, you, neither of you were really anticipating Seattle being this far into the playoffs well, is that when, when we no, and when you know when we eventually go face off against the team that we do the podcast about the la galaxy mm-hmm. we will, we'll, we'll, yeah we will yeah. be going to that game okay, so, okay. Yeah. we'll hit you guys well, enjoy, we'll hit you up we can do it much collab. closer to the airport. we should all go together yeah i'm down <laughs> i you know um, i know the mascot he's a cool guy oh okay. yeah we yeah, have, que- he, we have he questions sells great weed yeah um <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here if people want to listen how do they find you Lobbing scorchers on all platforms. Sounder at heart.com slash LS. And then uh, subscribe and support folks. The best Seattle soccer coverage is on there. 
Sub we to, want your money. Sub to our YouTube. We're we're trying yeah. to get to a thousand subs. But real, yeah, realistically, find us on YouTube, Lobbing Scorchers. Yeah. They can at least do that. That's free. Yeah, every yeah. single person listening right now, go subscribe to Lobbing Scorchers on YouTube. We love them. Thank you so much for being here, and hopefully, you won't be popping champagne next time we talk to you. We'll see. Appreciate you guys. Looking forward to the game. And we're back. Now it's time for a segment called Bet It and Forget It. Bet It and Forget It. Every week we end the show with a bet for this week's game. We make an outlandish prediction, something that almost definitely will not happen, but could. Each week we all put up $5. If no one hits, the money rolls over to the next week. And eventually by the time someone's weird prediction comes true, they might win a good chunk of change. Our pool for this week is now $45. Does that factor in the three games? Remember we said it would be like a three game thing? Oh, no, that's one. We're doing 15 per game. Oh, that's right. That's what we decided at our Big last money. preview. Is that I believe because- so. That makes it $75. Wow. $75. So- that's most of the money. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, money. Is there even honestly, we would we need more Patreon subs is what we're like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Time for 100 more oops all banters. Yeah. <laughs> I, we 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 are uh, we are enjoying a little bit more support after that. I did spend all of that money already, including mm-hmm. all of the future earnings from it mm-hmm. for you the would. next three years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Darren has a pink cocaine. Uh, I told, I've been telling you, Travis, we should not let him manage the money. He looks, you know, harmless, but yeah. deep down inside, there's a tiger in there. Mm-hmm. Just t- sometimes I just snort Himalayan sea salt just to get me by between <laughs> between the real and stuff. shade. Hey. It's all it's all just a color uh, fixation. Yeah, it's it's the synesthesia. Does that work? I don't know. I've been thinking yeah. about synesthesia a lot, and I don't believe it's real. Really? I think I think. Oh, you don't believe fake. in it? I don't think it's real because uh, he, here's what I don't understand: you see colors when you hear music, so you're just driving on the highway, listening to music, and there's fucking colors everywhere. You shouldn't be allowed to have a license. What are you talking about? That can't be real. Right. That's you see dangerous. colors, and it's opaque. Like you see colors and you stop seeing other stuff. I don't know, but it would. It, regardless, it shouldn't. You should be put in jail if that's true. <laughs> I only think of things in in terms of Photoshop layers. <laughs> sure, okay. you see colors, but what are, what's the blending? <laughs> if you have synesthesia, the listen, the opacity. If, you, if you listen to this podcast and you have synesthesia, explain to me why you should be allowed to have a driver's license. Do or that just explain the- to us what synesthesia is, because clearly yeah. that's helpful to us, too. Because we don't know. <laughs> okay. It seems have- cool. That seems like one of the cool things. Like, that's if why you're I don't like, think oh, it's I've been struck with blank, synesthesia is one of the cool ones, for sure. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Wow. The- <laughs> it's... They're, they're trying to sell me something. So we... we <laughs> this I have, is snake oil. <laughs> I have a bet that I'm very confident in going into oh, this match. Oh, okay. And it surrounds a player that I've made a lot of bets about. In fact, he's even on the team that I drafted early in the season. Um, and I think I'm in the lead. I'm not sure. The, Happy to review those scores anytime. No, we'll do it another time. The I got time. No? Here's, here is my bet that I'm very confident in. Olivier Giroud, stoppage time game winner. <gasps> stoppage time game winner from our number nine up front. Wow. I felt like game winner wasn't enough. It's got to be in stop. Wow. And not extra time. Stoppage time. Mm-hmm. Okay. It can be it can be a stop it can be stoppage time in extra time, the way that Gareth Bale did, but it has to be in stoppage time. Right. Fair? Fair. Yeah, that's a good one. I feel like I'm I'm good for one gasp an episode at this point. <laughs> They're all genuine. <gasps> <gasps> Carlos Vela, what? It's always Vela related, I think. <laughs> Carlos Vela play? <laughs> that actually would be a bet. That Carlos would... Vela plays in ski goggles. I feel like I might allow it. Carlos Vela <laughs> over 70 minutes? Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. 70? Oh my well, if you God. go to extra time, you got you add it's, in. You have multiple this, extra times. It, it is an interesting thing to see if it plays into the bets here. You mentioned international duty, and we've also mentioned, like, does Giroud start? Mm-hmm. So now you've got Vela, Giroud, Boanga, and uh, Kamara in, like, 
interesting situations. Mm. You know? Uh, I'm going to go only defender score. Ooh. Both teams. For both teams? Both cool. teams. Any any goal both that happens, teams. it will have to be scored by a defender. So if the game's three to one, all four goals somehow would have to come from defenders. I like that bet. That's a fun bet. That's good. I will say okay. caveat, wing backs count. So like so Kiki so Kike is playing wing back, we're gonna have to consider him. But yikes. That's, that's just that's just giving me a little bit of daylight. Well, not not the much. There. Well, hmm. yeah, if we win one nil hmm. and Kike scores the goal, but okay. Somebody wants that okay. $75. <laughs> Greedy little Vince. <laughs> Someone's going to go out <laughs> on a date, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all right. My bet is, I, I actually, now that I said all of that out loud, I think a good bet for that context is, and you tell me how to adjust this to make it outlandish enough, David Martinez goal. I mean, I don't think it's unrealistic that he plays. Right, but he has not played a lot. Yeah, he hasn't played a lot lately. That depth chart is pretty long. Mm-hmm. He played. He played in the against Vancouver in one game. Correct. He came in yep. in the second game. Did he come in at all in the first? I remember being I surprised know. that he was a sub. In well, second game, games. Steve was like, "Just yank guys off. Like yeah. we're not winning this game. Let's I let's think... not get anyone injured." So that's why David was got some extra minutes. I feel like he maybe had like a minute. Like a very cameo appearance in the first game, but not much. Do you I think, think it? It's, adu- Go ahead. I think it's kind of fair. Because, I mean, do you think it's as game? unrealistic as Olivier Giroud's stoppage time goal? Sadly, no. Stoppage time game winner. <laughs> <laughs> I like this is an indictment of Olivier Giroud's play mm-hmm. with LAFC. But like, I actually, if, if if like you've laid, if you guys laid your both bets out and were like Vince, pick one like card or the other, I would actually pick Darren's if I wanted to win. Yeah. I- but doesn't mean that it's not outlandish. Right. I mean, I think the question is like, first it's like, do they, do they get the playing time? Do they get the the chances? Right. And that's, right. that's we outlandish. know Giroud's going to play. Whether we or not don't. he starts. I, I don't know. They're, they're both, I think, going to get a window that's less than a full match. And I think, <laughs> let's say they both play 15 minutes. I'd take Can I remove, to score in that 15 minutes. <laughs> can I remove Giroud. one of my parameters then? Since since you're gonna do straight goal, let's can, let's meet in the middle somewhere. Like let's add something to Martinez too. Well, I, I think Travis, to, you, just having the game winner would be yeah. So Giroud game winner, Martinez goal, yeah. Vince's all goals are defenders. I feel like that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I across think we're the good board, there. I think we're at even odds it. across the board. Great. All right. Well, we shall see. We got a playoff match on Saturday, y'all. Are you guys gonna be there? Why did I say it like that? <laughs> we got a playoff match at Saturday, y'all. Uh, are you guys going to be there? California. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trump, thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> we'll do the dance. Um, Christian Pulisic, you are good. Um, we didn't even talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to talk about it anymore. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> people are already mad at me enough. Are you guys going to be at the game? Uh, still undecided. Yeah, some, some way or another. All right. Well, I'll be there. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there. And hopefully, we'll see you guys at the tailgate ahead you'll, of time. You'll be there with two arms with scarves just hanging. Arms out, <laughs> scarves just hanging from your arms. Get your scarves. We said we didn't have that many left, but look at them. <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't have that many left, and I want to be clear. Uh, <laughs> our theme music is done by the insane team of James Valentine, Nate Walcott, and Louis Palmer. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at happyfootsadfoot. Review us. Tell your friends. And now we're on Blue Sky. We're on Blue. Everyone say it with me. Blue Sky. Blue Sky. I can't. (laughs) We're on Blue Sky. Whoa. (laughs) Darren, will you do the rest of it with that voice? (laughs) With that voice. Oh, we already did the Patreon. We've talked too much about the Patreon. So go, just go ahead and do this one. From here. Uh. If you want to support the show, you can pick up some half o staff entire merch by going to half o by going to happyfoots at footpod.com. Any support goes a long way to keeping the show going and the community growing. Thanks again, we'll see you at Pimo Baby. I love you. Bye. I love you, bye. That, that I, can... love you. <laughs> that... I love you. I love you. I feel like we just did the trailer for Stranger Things. 
<laughs> Actually, I do want to hear you say our theme music is done by the insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> The laugh, <laughs> creepy. Everyone, shut up. Our theme music is done by the insane team of James Valentine, Nate Walcott, and Louis Palmer. You I can love subscribe you. to our YouTube channel where all episodes and clips are available in video form at youtubecom slash Happy Foot Sad Foot. Well, that's what I, happened. I blacked out. <laughs> I love you, Satan. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that pink cocaine. Yeah, that really is that pink cocaine. <laughs>